Today is the 1st of May, 2024. This is a meeting of the 100 Pounder Special Focus. Our speaker is Audrey N. Audrey first came into the rooms of OA in 2017. She then went on her way, but returned to us again in March, 2020. Audrey is from Dublin, but she's currently li living in Meath. So Audrey, I'm gonna hand it over to you and off you go. Take it away, my friend, okay? So much, Catherine. <clears throat> Thanks everybody for allowing me to be of service. My name is Audrey Ann, and I am a grateful, recovered, compulsive overeater. And um, yeah, I just I'm really really nervous. Um, so yeah, just thanks for allowing me to be of service. So yes, I have as Catherine kindly introduced me, and I am originally from Dublin and currently living outside Dublin in County Mead at the moment and have for the last 10 years. I like to do the geographicals, you know, to um to see will that, you know, help my disease, so I call. So um <clears throat> what it was like, what happened and what it's like now. So I have always had um issues with food. You know, I've always used food from a very young age. Um and I believe that I have the, the compulsion for more, you know, so wanting more food, more attention, more validation, um, better grades, better job, um, all the while um, believing that I was never good enough. So that's a deep rooted um, thing that I work on and constantly have to work on. Um, but yeah, I like, I remember back, you know, I can I go through the whole drunk log for like hours and hours, you know. Um, but I remember back the first memory of <clears throat> having weight issues was my communion dress had to be let out by the local um the local seamstress because I had doubled my weight within a year. Um and I was seven years old at that age. Uh, a couple of years later, um the school referred me to the children's hospital and Every week I was on a bus to the dietitian, and I remember the pain and the shame of that bus journey like it was yesterday. Um, and I remember the conversations my mom used to have with the dietitian. You know, I, I like I'm making the meals. I don't know what she's doing, but I was cunning. I was very manipulative at that age and I was very deceitful. So I would hang out with the people that had the best treats. You know, so that was my friends, you know, any of the girls in school that, you know, went to their grannies on a Sunday, you know, I'd be going with them, you know. Um, and I also remember even saying to, you know, one or two of my friends at lunchtime, we'd go home for lunch and I'd be like, oh, hello, I forgot my key. And they'd bring me to their house, you know, and I was able to eat foods in their house then as well. Um, and yeah, that's how I that's how I went through life was, you know, just being very manipulative to get what I needed around food, stole food, stole money, um, always feeling that I needed more, you know, always feeling that I needed more. Um, and I believe that I just existed, you know, I existed in a life and I watched everybody else living, you know, I watched people from the sidelines. So that went from sports and school, um, went to the teenage discos, you know, to the Debs and um, watch people getting married, every single thing I watched. Um, and I thought that, you know, if I got the good job, you know, if I got went back and went to college, if I had the kids. And I even remember, you know, my friends were all getting married and, you know, somebody paid attention to me that I didn't have any interest in. And I was thinking, reflecting now I know but at the time I was like you know I can't be on my own you know so I settled and had kids and that relationship didn't last very long so I've always I've like always been overweight you know so I've always carried this disease um physically um there was never a time when I could lose weight I've done all you know like I loved it the you know, big book is where I got my recovery from. And I love the chapter um, more about alcoholism, you know, because it goes through the list of things I've, you know, I've tried in relation to the food. It was all the diets, 
all the slimming clubs. Um, you know, I've tried laxatives. I've tried, I moved to the States, you know, I've, I've done it all, you know, um, the only thing I haven't done is surgery, you know, but in 2020, when I came back into the rooms, I had made contact um, with bariatric surgery and I said, look, I'll come back, you know, in 2017, sorry, just to go back in 2017, um, when I first came into the rooms, um, I attended meetings and I never, you know, I was, was an accident, you know, so I can't say that, that I had recovery then. Um, I was still eating foods and I was still justifying why I could eat them, you know, because it was a party. It was a Sunday. Um, you know, it was, you know, the kids didn't need it. So I needed to eat it, you know, all of those excuses. Um, and then, you know, life was lifey. You know, I have two children. I'm a single parent and the meetings just, you know, they didn't become precedent you know it was you know life got busy and I was like well I better go and look after my children and um my weight just kept creeping up and up and up you know so at this point I was I believe I was about 29 stone um about 400 pounds and I remember my mom saying to me you know you're gonna have a heart attack you're gonna have a stroke you know and at this point you know I was on high blood pressure pressure medication I was on anxiety medication. Um, I was full of resentment. I was full of anger. I was full of fear. I think fear was one of my biggest, um, you know, I'm even when I done my step four, like I had 10 times the amount of fears than I did resentments, you know. Um, so I contacted the original lady who I had met in the rooms in 2017 and in 2020 in March I had gone away to Spain with girls from work and it was horrific you know it was absolutely horrific from having this shame and embarrassment of having to get the belt extender and um, uh, couldn't sit on the the beds at the side of the pool I had to sit at the side of it because mine just dipped and hit the ground um, and just numbing out numbing out with food and alcohol on that trip and when I came home as I said, I contacted that lady and she said, oh, there's phone meetings now. There's meetings on Zoom. You know, COVID has hit, you know, there's no face to face meetings at the moment. And so, yeah, so that's that's where I came back in. And yeah, it was really, really tough. And I could hear people talking about recovery and I could see people smiling and I could see people laughing and I was like, God, they're laughing, you know, <laughs> people in disease laughing. I was like, what's that all about? You know, because I thought this was the place you'd come and talk about how hard life was, you know, and the reason you could eat then, you know. So I ate because nothing happened and I ate because something happened. And I was like, now where am I going to go? Um, so I stayed and I kept coming to the meetings and that was March, April, May, June and July. And in the July, I remember my kids were going on a sleepover and I went in to buy some, you know, shopping. And I was like, I'm only going to have one. I'm only going to have one of this, one of this, one of this. And I remember standing there going, who are you kidding? You know, you're going to eat all of this. Um, and what I used to do was people would say, are you coming out? You're free. You don't have the kids. And I was like, no way, because I am going to have the best night of my life because I'm going to sit in and I'm going to be able to eat and comfort myself and there's nobody around. Um, and that's what I did, you know? So that night, you know, I picked up the phone and I contacted somebody and I was like, yeah, I can't do this. I can't do this anymore. And I need to get a sponsor. So that's what I did. You know, I got a sponsor. Um, but life was miserable, you know, even though, I thought, you know, what well, I can eat. I was eating all those foods, you know, um, I was taking as any amounts that I wanted, you know, but life was miserable. I remember leaving venues. I remember being at parties and just having that veil of disconnect, um, just not being there. You know, it was like the films where you see everybody laughing, you know, but you can't hear them. I actually couldn't hear. I couldn't engage. I couldn't be part of it. And I remember the next day people ringing, going, what happened? Where, where did you go? You know, 
um, and I just had to escape. And on the way home, what would I do? It would be the food. I'd go through the takeaways or the drive throughs or, you know, and saying, you know, can't keep going on like this, can't do it. Um, you know, that's what life was like, you know, just existing. Um, and I know the special focus of this meeting is a hundred pounder, you know, and I know anybody that's here, you know, whatever way the disease manifests, you know, whether it's under eating, over eating, bulimia, you know, um, disease just wants us dead, you know, and that's its purpose. Um, and a minute, Audrey. Thanks so much. Um, and I just didn't want to do that anymore. You know, I didn't want to just be existing. I wanted. I wanted the shine in, in the life that people had when I came into the rooms, you know. So when I contacted that person and, she, you know, she said, I'm not able to sponsor at the moment, but here's here's a couple of numbers, you know. And I remember knowing one of the numbers on it going, yeah, I remember this girl in the face to face meetings, you know, maybe I'll ring her. And I rang and she was like, yeah, I'm free. Let's start, you know. And I sat with a pen and a highlighter and my big book. And I said to the kids, I need this hour. This is the hour I need to read. And, you know, they were, so that was 2020. So four years ago. So they were 10 and 12. Um, and it was tough, you know, because I have a son with autism and he didn't really get the boundary of you need to give me an hour, you know, but I had to really fight through that because I needed this. I needed this. Um, and I wanted it. I wanted recovery. So I sat at the table and I had to do the call. And at the time, there was no outreach meetings. And she gave me a list and she was like, just pick numbers off it. And I was like, oh, I'm not doing that because why would anybody want to pick up the phone? They might be having their dinner. They might be with their family. And I remember making those outreach calls and people being like, oh, thank you so much for ringing. And, you know, it was just that feeling of belonging, you know, and knowing that I was exactly where I needed to be. It wasn't easy, you know. I had to put the food down. I mean, the food, my friend, my lover, my, you know, answer to everything I had to put down, you know. And it was a case of my sponsor just said, you know, just do it today. Just just put it down today. You know, just don't have it today. You know, don't think of forever, ever. Don't think of the birthdays. Don't think of the celebrations. Just put it down for today. And that's what I did, you know, so July 2024, um, I put down my red foods and that's, that's evolved over time. You know, I've never taken back any of my red foods. I've lost a lot of green foods over the last few years, you know, because they just, you know, I became more aware of them and I became, um, yeah, I just got it's more spiritually, the, the closer I got to God, you know. So working step, step one, believed I was powerless over food. My life was unmanageable. I went to work. I turned up. I had two kids that were going to school and I ran a house and I had a car. And by God, my life was unmanageable. I didn't open the post. I hid from the bills and um, the tax were coming at me, you know, and that was my unmanageability, you know, or I do everything in one day. All the shopping had to be done. The house had to be cleaned. The decluttering, you know, I just, that that was the unmanageability. So I had to really look at that, you know. So I had to look at the structure of life um, and I had to look at the fields, you know. So admitting was the first thing. And then, you know, I, I moved on through that. Um, and I love the step two, sanity, restore, restore me to sanity. And I always thought like that was a bit one flew over the cuckoo's nest. And I was like, I'm not insane. You know, and I was like, the things I was doing with food and life was insane you know um and I just wanted that peace you know I wanted the peace I wanted that for me sanity is peace you know just that peace in my head um and made a decision I love how step three so that was one step two step three made a decision you know I just had to make a decision I just had to make a decision to turn my life over to something um I've no religious connection um my children we they aren't in religious we're never in religious schools um so the freedom of, you know, choosing my own higher power is my step three, you know. So I chose something that was bigger than me and um, because I tried to play God for the last God knows how many years, you know, and it didn't work. So I was willing and um, with the willingness to turn it over. And I just at the start just was like, it's something bigger than me. I don't know what it is. It's out there. It's getting me up in the mornings. It's getting me to make those calls to my sponsor. It's getting me to outreach. It's getting me to sit in these meetings. 
um, and that's the understanding of my higher power. I now call it God. You know, some say sometimes I say higher power, sometimes I say God, but it is a God of my understanding. It's something that's bigger than me, and it's something that you know keeps me from um those food behaviors and keeps me away from um running my life with food which is what I was doing um and then my step four you know made a list and there's four columns in step four and the first three columns I mean no problemo I've done them as quick as anything you know because I and when somebody was like you know just the second column you have to do in 19 words and I was like no but you're not gonna get it you're not going to get the full story of why I have this resentment. You know, you need to know. Um, and it's not, it's a headline. You know, I know the story. That's important, you know. So my sponsor was like, no, no, I don't need to know. Just need to know the headline um, of why the resentment, you know. But the fourth column was the one that I had to really look at, you know, and it was my defects of character. Um, and as I said, my fears, you know, I had lots of fears. And then my sex conduct. So my sex conduct, I remember thinking, you know, uh, I'm single years, so I don't have a sex conduct, you know, but it was like, how did I behave in relationships? You know, the manipulation, you know, the withdrawal and the blame and all of that stuff I had to look um, and made that list, you know, and that's what I done in step four. Um, I actually loved doing it because um, I wanted the freedom. I really did want the freedom. Um, and I had heard you know, people talking in meetings about the freedom after doing, you know, their step four. And then I sat with my sponsor and I went through this, you know, my step five. So I shared it and she was nodding and she was going, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, God, you know, I'm not the only, you know, one that has done this or, you know, has these defects. And she said, you know, God doesn't put your step five on the fridge and keep it and look back. It's gone. You've shared it, you know, um, and that was, you know. There was just something really peaceful after I shared that. Um, and the thing about step four is I'm making a list of me, the person that was in disease. So I was a sick person. Um, and now I'm a person that wants to um, live spiritually well. And um, so I no longer. So I needed to lose that shame around the things I done when I was in disease. Um, so that was great. And the step five and. Step six and step seven is quite short in the big book, but it's so powerful. You know, it's really, really powerful. Um, admitting those defects of character and then asking God to remove them. Um, and removing them, I have to ask daily, you know, and that's why part of my morning meditation involves saying the step, the step um, seven prayer. And I get more of a deeper understanding of my defects of character. Um, and... I don't know if anybody has a child that has um any additional needs um but my son is very 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 good at mirroring my defects back to me in a in a quite uh, in a quite healthy way um and I get away with nothing you know so um they can be they can be highlighted um you know sometimes more than I want them to be um and then the step eight was. <sighs> made a list of all the persons we had harmed um and I had harmed a lot of people you know in my my disease and I really really wanted to make amends to people you know because I wanted to be able to move on and I don't live you know as I said I live a, about a half an hour away from my family and my kids dad and so I was like okay I'm gonna go and stay down in Dublin for the weekend and I'm going to make amends you know um and that was the step nine was making the amends and that's what I did you know and sitting down with my kid's dad and saying you know it was wrong of me to um put those expectations on you or to accept expect you to be um and I remember it was probably the first time where he was like <laughs> quiet um, and he just kept kind of looking at me going, oh, oh, OK, you know. Um, and even when he was trying to, you know, make apologize. And I said, I, I'm not actually saying this so that you can, you know, apologize to me for anything. I was like, I need to take full responsibility for where I was wrong. 
um, made an amends to my children because they had a very chaotic mam that they didn't know what mam they were getting when they came out of school. Is she happy? Is she sad? Has she binged? You know, are we going for food? Are we not going for food? What's wrong with her? You know, um, is there food in the house? Has she ate it all? You know, is she trying to tell us that we ate it and then making us think that we're crazy? Um, you know, they're the things that I've done and I made amends, made amends to my parents, especially for the worry, you know, for the worry that I caused. Um, and I used to see it in their eyes, you know, I used to see it in their eyes that, you know, that they were, they were worried for me, you know, um, and the living amends around that as well is just being able to be of service to them, you know, um, and being of service to my family, being of service to my friends. Thank I thank, thank you. you. I had to, thanks Lydia. I had to make amends to friends. You know, I didn't turn up to christenings, hens parties, birthday parties, um, and, also make amends for the self-seeking, you know, um, because that's that's what I do. You know, I'd go into the self-seeking and I would want everybody else to feel sorry for me, you know, for the life that I had. Um, and step 10, you know, the step 10 for me each day is um, a miracle, you know, a miracle that I get to look at the defects and I get when a resentment builds up, when a fear um, that I get to and the book says it you know I have to get rid of it because if I don't if I don't I will if I don't share it I'll wear it you know so I have a resentment in work and all of a sudden I'm driving home and the person in front of me you know doesn't make the yellow lie and I come in and the kids haven't done the delf and they're getting it and everybody's getting it because I'm holding on to that resentment so I have to get rid of it you know I have to clear that really quickly um and yeah, you know, that's what I do. I can act down on my defects, you know, so I have, to, I have to get rid of them, you know, I have to get rid of them Um, and fears, you know, and then fears crop up Um, and ask God, what would you have me be? You know, and I used to always think it was what would God have me do, you know, and I will do this and do that and do this. And sometimes God is like, just take a breath and just be a human being, you know, because I think I have to be the human doing, you know, Um, my step 11 prayer meditation um and it changes you know it really changes but what I like to do and what I've done recently is you know I've started to put the phone on airplane mode you know so that I go at night time I don't have any um I'm not on any social media and haven't been for about 10 years um but like I would scroll you know I can get into the rabbit hole of scrolling you know whether it's on other whatsapp groups or you know so definitely that daily meditation is I have to take those conscious contact breaths you know to take God breaths um I have to slow things down just take a pause pause before answering um and in the morning what I do is I just have to you know say how do I feel how am I feeling just put my hand on my heart you know take a breath um I do a prayer meditation meeting um and I've done that for four years, you know, I might get to it every day, but um, I do love it, you know, and it's it's connecting with other people and getting to hear the daily reader and just even saying the serenity prayer with other people, you know, and know that feeling of fellowship. But the, the step 11 is that conscious contact with God, you know, it's a relationship with me and my higher power and I have to work at it, you know, so a relationship is between two people. So therefore I have to play my part. And then step 12. I have to sponsor. I have to read through the big book. Um, I have to give away what I've been given. Um, I have my I have a sponsor. My sponsor has a sponsor. I have sponsees who sponsor. Um, and another part of my step twelve is self care because I neglected myself so much in disease. Um, I'd stand on the sidelines of the football pitch in a cardigan in the winter because I felt I wasn't good enough. You know to invest in myself um I was the last on the list um and another part of my step 12 is you know being of service I didn't you know I there's a big part of me that you know realizes that I didn't get well to sit in my room back-to-back -back meetings you know I got well to live you know um and by god am I living I'm living I'm living you know I'm now living you know so I don't just exist anymore um so I meet friends for walks I go to parties 
I go to conventions, I meet fellows. Um, my disease is really, really serious. I, on the other hand, am not, you know. Um, so I do have, um, you know, and we're not a glum lot. The book tells us, you know. Um, so today I um, have 168 pound, I think, is the weight loss, you know. So I can qualify to be a 100 pounder. Um, and I'm working towards a healthy body weight. Um, and sometimes I can struggle with that because I want it all gone yesterday. And I don't want any excess, you know, skin left. And as I said, I have a son with extra knees and he's like, you know, I, if I was you, like, I wouldn't get any work done. But like, I'm kind of seeing you're getting a bit of hangy skin here, you know, so, you know, and I just have to accept that. I have to accept that, you know, my body is changing and, um, you know, it's, 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 it's in God's hands, you know, every single thing is in God's hands. Um. So today, what do I do? Today, I live. I live in recovery. Um, OA has brought me into. I'm in three fellowships because I'm an addict, you know, and I love to um to sit in the rooms of um recovery, and I'm because the thing for me is that I always seek the outside validation, you know. So if you all accepted me, and if I had the best share, and if I had the good clothes, and if um I turned up to work and was the best employee, you know, that that's that's the outside validation that I always seeked. And I can only get that from God. I can only get that validation from my God, you know. So when I get up in the morning, you know, I ask God, you know, remind me today that I am enough, you know, that I have taken this time to connect to you um, that I have invested you know, invested in myself, you know, so that I can turn up and be the person that God has created. You know, God has created me to be authentic, you know, um, and nobody is the same. Thank God nobody is the same, you know. Um, and the thing I love about recovery and the thing I love about, you know, I'm big book. I love the big book. You know, it's what got me well. It's what teaches me how to live. You know, the big book teaches me how to live. Um, and that's what it does. Its purpose is, you know, show me how to live, you know, free of resentment and anger. Um, and when they crop up that I get to work on them, you know, um, my favorite chapter is more about alcoholism because every single part of it is, you know, the man of 30. I've done it. I thought if I could stay off the field for a certain amount of time. And then when I went back on it, you know, I was back to where I was putting back on the weight. You know, there's Jim, you know, and Fred, one who eats on the highs and one who, you know, one who drank on the highs and one who drank on the lows. That's me. Um, I never thought I had any identification with the jaywalker. I was like, you know, he's crazy horse, you know, going in front of the cars. But that's exactly me. When I pick up a field, that is what I'm doing. I am the jaywalker, you know, um, thinking I'll just have one I just walk out in front of the traffic once you know I just have one and then you know I just have two drive throughs you know and that's going in front of the you know the the fire engine you know and 10 stone back on you know that is me you know that's minutes. thanks um Lydia um so I do have photos and if I just get Rita to share the the photos um the before and I always cringed when I first came into meetings when people shared photos because in my diet years, um, I never maintained weight loss. So they, they're self-explanatory. Um, I was fancy dressed. I don't know whether anyone remembers X Factor Honey G. So that was me as Honey G dressed up. That's not my daily attire. Um, and then the second one was um, my auntie visit from America, my daughter's communion, um, a fake communion because they didn't make communions, but she wanted a party. Um, that was me in the middle on my son's graduation. And that was, I was came into the rooms. So that was June, 2020. Um, the summer 2020 was the gray. We were in the middle of COVID and we were doing exercises. And then my photographs of today are of me um living um and they are how I get to live 
Um, and so the top one is every Sunday morning I do a sauna and you go from the sauna into the river and that's me. The next one is um, on a roller coaster that I can fit on. Um, the bottom one is me on the, with the sunrise behind me in LA and I got to go to the birthday party um, January previous, so January 23 and Christmas there. Um, just a picture of me. And I, I love those photographs because they show that I'm just, you know, living life to the best that I can. Um, and I just want to read something because <clears throat> I hear this share, I heard this being shared on a share um, of an NA. And I love going to all uh, recovery meetings because I'm an addict and I just, there's one solution. And the solution for me is that I have a higher power. Um, and I'm probably not going to find this page now um but this basically is oh god i'm not gonna find it am i not and i had it marked out um so if i find it really quickly i will read it um but yeah it's no i'm probably not gonna find it i'll try and find it before the time runs out but yeah no i'm just really grateful to be here oh, to be I'm able to Thank you, Lydia. And I found it just now. So I'll just share it. So it's um, we realize that we have been giving you much direction and advice. We may have seen to lecture. If that is so, we are sorry for we ourselves don't always care for pe people to lecture us. But what we have related is based upon experience. Some of it painful. We had to learn things. Had to, we had to learn things the hard way. That is why we are anxious that you understand that you avoid these unnecessary difficulties. So to you out there who may be with us soon, we say good luck and God bless you. Thank you.